Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today, we find ourselves in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the home of my birth. And joining us today is the 24-year-old Hayden Zilmer. Hayden, how are you? Good. How are you, Scott? Good, buddy. Hey, you know, I was was a little disappointed uh, in in the the Greco result. I I wanted to see you go through to uh, make the world team in Greco, but didn't quite get her done. Um, Can you talk about that experience? Yeah, no, it was fun. Um, I've been training Greco since kind of full time since January, um, and um, I don't know, I just fell short a little bit. It was it was good though. It was fun. Um, just kind of got to get back in the saddle and go again. So, I mean, falling short literally means you know <laughs> you were runner up, and uh, runner up is never our goal, but somebody's going to be runner up. In this case, it was you. You have the 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 benefit though of being a what i call two discipline wrestler okay actually three but you know aside from from greco you also wrestle freestyle you had a great collegiate career while at north dakota state so let's talk about that decision to wrestle at the at the world team trials in lincoln nebraska coming up here in just uh, a few short days how did that decision come about um well i got done with world team trials for greco Um, and then I, uh, decided that Wednesday I was going to wrestle in the last chance. Um, you know, I was already in shape and everything. So I was like, why not wrestle? And I I was training freestyle a couple days a week. A couple guys needed a partner and stuff. And, um, so I wrestled some freestyle and then I decided to wrestle in the last chance. And then, well, after I won that and then first year you got to wrestle the world team trials. So, um, you won 6-4 in the finals at the LCQ, giving you that right to go to Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, you've moved up a little bit in weight. Uh, I know you to be a tall guy, about six foot three, but 97 kilos, how does it feel? Oh, it's good. Um, well, Greco, I wrestle 98 kilos. So, um, I know this kind of fit right in pretty good. Now, in college, uh, you were at 184, right? Yep. Okay. And by the way, just a note. Uh, I thought your your college career at North Dakota State with Roger Kish was uh, outstanding. I, I, I don't know what the experience like um, was like for you, uh, from your point of view, but um, you did well. And and uh, quite frankly, I, I think uh, there's a lot to be proud of. How do you see your collegiate uh, career? Um, it was good. Um, I like North Dakota State, and I you know I uh, recommend going to North Dakota State. I wouldn't change anything. Um, It's awesome. Uh, I had a good experience. We're talking with Hayden Zilmer this morning. You can follow him on Facebook at HaydenZilmerWrestling.com or just HaydenZilmerWrestling, not .com, but it should be .com. Uh, You're you're excellent at keeping your uh, family, friends, and fans updated. Um, As much as the Minnesota Storm is known for its Greco stars, uh, now we have some guys that are really, truly exploring both. Have we done a disservice to our sport by insisting our athletes uh, focus specifically on Greco or focus specifically on freestyle? Perhaps freestyle is uh, more guilty than Greco, but what are your thoughts on that idea? Um, yeah, I know. I mean, I kind of like wrestling both. I mean, I don't I feel like a lot of people like to pick one side or the other, but um I think it's great wrestling both. You're asking a guy that uh, just likes to wrestle, so. <laughs> but isn't that the fun of it? You know, yeah. If, once we start specializing, as it were, uh, we lose perhaps the reason we got into it at all. I mean, 19 years exactly. ago, you started wrestling just to have some fun, right? Yep, exactly. How did you end up wrestling? Your dad at at uh, I don't even know how tall was your dad. Six what? He's 6'6". Six, 6'6". Six. Six, six. You're 6'3". Six, How did you end up wrestling and not playing basketball? Um, well, their youth basketball program didn't start until I was like in, until I was like six or seven and um, in my town. And then I decided, hey, let's wrestle. And then I wrestled and then I kind of played both for like two years. And then I decided I'm just going to wrestle. And then, um, then I, it stuck. So... <laughs> Okay. Then we just started crapping all over the place. But but going back to that, yeah, you're right. So like I feel like when we were growing up, everybody through um, high school and you know elementary school and stuff, we all wrestled both styles. And I, I don't know how we got away from it. <laughs> you know what's interesting is around mining camps uh, and around all the communities, 
uh, around mining areas like where you're from, the Cuyuna Range up there in Crosby, uh, Minnesota. Uh, if you think about uh, wrestling is something miners did for fun. There wasn't a whole lot of other stuff to do. Nobody wanted to fight, but wrestle was certainly an option. So i got to believe that um, in, in Crosby and other areas along the, the Iron Range up there, uh, wrestling is pretty darn good. Can you tell us yeah, about go back to your roots? <laughs> right. Can you tell us about how how popular wrestling is up in uh, northern Minnesota? Um, you know what? It's it's kind of coming back a little bit. It kind of fell a little bit. You know, this I feel like the the numbers of kids and stuff are are kind of down in the schools and stuff. Um, so actually, when I was growing up and stuff, I had to do a lot of traveling. Okay. Um, we could find pr- training partners and stuff, but um, you know. I feel like a few of the, the neighboring towns, um, I'm from Crosby and the neighboring towns, Aiken, Minnesota, and they, they love wrestling, you know, like they have a ton of wrestlers out. I, I help them out some, you know, a lot of times and stuff, and they have so many kids in their room. They have like 50 some kids. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I guess that's, that's, um, seven on up, but still it's, it's I feel like that's an awesome number. Here's um, the cool part. I mean, you like being around these kids. You went to school uh to to be a teacher a coach uh and, you know possibly even an administrator but uh you're a perfect example for these kids to to follow and uh, i think it's it's like the perfect storm as it were how do you feel about that no I, that's awesome um i like that um so i guess that's kind of a good thing getting in there and uh teaching the kids and and going in there and they they kind of maybe look up to me a little bit, being from a small town. They know who I am. Um, and you're also six foot yeah. three. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. they look up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about your team, the the Minnesota Storm team. You've got some great guys uh, on that team: Joe Rao, um, let's see, Alec Ortiz. You've got uh, Ness, or should I say, the Ness brothers? Um, but you've got some great guys to work out with and work around. Can you describe what that atmosphere is like? No, it's good. It's awesome. Um, you know, and then we got our coaching staff too, which is really good. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, me and Joe work out every day. Um, I feel like uh, we just kind of get each other better. Um, it's awesome that having all these other guys around that are that are really good and they're motivating. It's just kind of easy to go to practice every day, you know. When you say the coaching staff, you're talking about guys like seven-time U.S. Olympic team coach Danny Chandler. I'm yeah. still trying to figure this dude out. He never ages. He always looks the same. Uh, he's always there. You know, six, it's understandable why he is the six-time USAW coach of the year, three-time Olympian himself. But man, he has so much knowledge. And yeah, it's crazy. Then he's course, a man, and then going through his practices and stuff, he he just picks things apart, and you just you just learn every day. Of course, he's, awesome. in, he's in the Hall of Fame as well. Brandon Paulson is awesome. there for Greco. You've got Mike Houck. Uh I was there when he was inducted in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, Jimmy Richardson. Uh, yep. Assistant coach for over thirty years. Jared Lawrence. Are you kidding me? That he's can't. awesome. Yeah, Marty Morgan, former assistant coach, University of Minnesota world team member, and NCAA champ, and, and he'll never tell you this uh, unless you ask. Ask him about boxing and his family's history in the sport. Uh, Brandon Agam, uh, Luke Becker. You've got so many good guys to draw down from. Uh, if you've got a question, they've got answers, right? Yeah, for sure. It's awesome. <laughs> the Minnesota Training Center is uh, recognized through its storm affiliation, of course, but because of the athletes it's produced. You're one of those guys. This is an opportunity, but also you have an obligation to uphold everything that the uh, the storm stand for. It's it's an awesome responsibility, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, um, just go out there and perform and, and work hard and practice and look good for them. <laughs> so when, when at minutes, or excuse me, at North Dakota State, uh, you obviously crossed over a state to, to wrestle. Was staying in this in the state of Minnesota ever an option? Um, yeah, it was. Um, through like my recruiting process and stuff, it was an option and stuff. And um, you know, uh, Coach Kish wrestled for uh, Minnesota. Um, you know, and then I started talking to him a little bit, and then um, I don't know, it just kind of stuck. We uh, kind of clicked a little bit, and it just felt like a good fit. Kind of a Fargo's kind of like that small town feel. 
even though it's a big town. It um, does, doesn't it? Really does have yeah, a small town feel. It really does. And I really like that about it. And I decided, hey, let's I'm gonna go to North Dakota State. So it can get hot up there in the summer, let me tell you what. Yeah, the humidity's a killer. <laughs> <laughs> it's darn right uncomfortable sometimes. That's why everybody up there watches television. Um Yeah. I wanna go back to your high school career at Crosby Ironson, okay? And your senior year was a magical year for you. Uh, you hold the school's all-time wins record, but one of the reasons why was that senior campaign, 43-1 and one on your way to a third straight uh, championship crown in the state. What was that senior year like? Can you describe that? Um, it was good. Um, so I, my senior year of high school, I wrestled 130 pounds. Um, so I was, I was small, <laughs> but... Um, it was good. I, I wrestled well and I don't know, I just kind of, uh, was, was kind of growing yet still. And I, I won a lot of matches. It was good. <laughs> was, was it an easy, uh, experience for you, your senior year academically? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was easy for me academically. Um, I, uh, I, my grade point average was like a, like a 3.7 I ended with in high school. Um, so the academic side was good. Um, you know, and just just wrestling, I felt like it was it was it was pretty easy. So Nick and Mary, your mom and dad, they they never had to say, "Hey, hey, Hayden, let's crack a book." You know, let's get no. down, let's get your homework done. They never had to do that, did they? No, they never had to do that. Um, I was pretty good at getting my stuff done, and um, you know, I had like I had a good friends to surround myself with, and um, they were uh, they were kind of the same way. Their parents really never had to get after them, and um, yeah, so. We broadcast the Big 12 championships in Kansas City, and I got it. Was it was it two years ago in Kansas City? Yep, uh, two years ago. Yeah, and I got to watch you wrestle, and I'll tell you what, that was a ton of fun. Your uh, your, your Big 12, uh, you know, the, the the Big 12 was evolving at that point, and uh, you seemed to be easy enough to evolve with it. And I just wanted to thank you for that performance because. Um, it really made us in, on press row, made us sit up a little bit taller and keep an eye out for you. So we, we appreciate that. So what's up next for you travel-wise be, be, besides Lincoln, Nebraska, here in a week and a half or so? What's what's up next for you? You're going overseas. Yep, I'm going overseas. So I'm going to Lincoln, and then I'm coming back, and I'm wrestling on the 13th. Um, or I'm leaving the 13th, and I'm going to Budapest. Um, and then I'm going to go to a two-week-long training camp in Budapest, and then after that, I believe me and Joe Rao, we're going to branch off from Team USA and we're going to go to Serbia and wrestle in a tournament. So, How does that work? When you get over there, you don't speak the, the common language. You speak, of course, fluent wrestling. But uh, when you get over there, what's, the, you know, what's it like as far as inserting yourself into the local um, nightlife and, and uh acclimating yourself to these different countries um well i feel like everybody kind of speaks a little bit of english everywhere i've went so far um but uh the last trip i went on um you know we were kind of this like segregated a little bit with team usa so everybody you know you just spoke english the whole time you know you didn't really bother with anything else and like all your food and stuff was um already there it was, it was kind of nice you know um, so you didn't really have to go sit down and order anything, but, um, the countries where I was at, you know, like they spoke pretty good English, but I guess, um, we'll see what's coming up. But, um, the biggest thing for me when I go over there is the time change. I, I feel like I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm just kind of, kind of, uh, time change would absolutely mess bit. with me, but you're a high level athlete. You're one of the guys that, you know, is physically trained. And then the time change can probably catch up to you four or five days into it. But uh, yep. you get over there, acclimate, uh, train or wrestle, and uh, and get after it. What's your, what is the greatest challenge for you? Because you always seem to be happy. You're always physically fit. Um, you always seem to be motivated. What's your greatest challenge? Um, I'm not even sure. Um, I think my greatest challenge is, is staying on track, you know, with that kind of stuff. Um just kind of like uh, I want to do it all, and I book my days that are just, you know, one thing after another. I feel like uh, slowing down a little bit and um, just focusing on, like, 
uh, you know, one one task. That's my biggest challenge. Is it really? I, so, yeah. Well, it's that I find that fascinating. I would think that uh, you know, wrestling perhaps puts everything into perspective, and and we're going to see how well you're able to focus on the job at hand in uh, freestyle at uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I can't wait to see the results. I, I got to believe you're all pumped up for it and uh, yep. psyched and getting ready to go. Uh, congratulations on your career so far. 97 kilos looks good on you. I got to believe right, uh, you. you're excited as well. Hey, thank you for taking the time to join us today in the Nike hot seat today, Hayden. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. And I'm going to call you this for the first time, perhaps. I don't know if anybody else has ever used it, but he is Crosby's favorite son, Hayden Zilmer, yeah, right. at 24 years old, the six foot three star, now wrestling 19 years, is going to be uh, attempting uh, to cross over back into freestyle and compete and win an opportunity to be on the world team. I like that opportunity, and I think he's got a pretty, pretty good chance indeed. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Media. Thanks for watching this special one-on-one in the Nike hot seat today. Hayden, thanks, Hayden. Thank you.